I notice when classifying good medium of exchange, the lecture point out technical aspects from a purely technological, economic, transactional level, eluding socio-cultural aspects such as recognition of the medium of exchange as a valid one for the population and ease of its adoption by the population. So I would add popularity, the recognition of the medium of exchange as a valid method to transact by society as a whole, governments, individuals, NGOs, etc. Adaptability, ability of the population to adopt the technology already accessible in both countries and different socioeconomic aspects of the population without restriction. It's not a minor difference because humans are at the center of the transaction and the real purpose, they're not the, not the goods or services contracted. And of course we could include infinite alternatives and combinations, sustainability, for example, of a currency that needs more electricity than several countries to work. That is called a subtweet. I believe we're referring to Bitcoin there. Um, yes, I agree. I'm going to put comma, but. Ultimately, all currencies develop these kind of social cultural values, all mediums of exchange, and even the totally boring paper ones, right? Like, watch a music video, people are throwing dollar bills in the air. Okay, does, it, does that provoke some type of reaction? Yeah, right? Like, watch a crime movie, someone steals dollar bills from a safe and they throw in the bed. Does it, do you feel emotionally neutral looking at them? No, right? Imagine a world that's using gold. Oh, it's jewelry. It's shiny. People have it on their wrists. People have it on their ears. Does it provoke an emotional reaction? Does it mean something? Does it, does it pick up cultural and economic, cultural and social values independent of its pure technical characteristics? Yeah, I think that's right. But, here's the but. What some people would argue is, at any point in time, the ones that then develop those cultural and social values are ones that based on whatever is available in that community at that time are the ones that share more of the technological characteristics so the technological characteristics drive adoption and then once you have adoption because humans do assign meaning to things humans are a storytelling animal humans do not go around talking about the technical merits of the underlying factors of their medium of exchange like, not a single regular human being has ever done that in the history of the world, right? Like, people say, like, oh, it'll be very romantic if I get a diamond ring, right? They don't say, well, diamonds are you know, durable and they're pretty fungible. And, you know, that's not how De Beers sold diamonds. De Beers sold diamonds with, like, stories about love and commitment and stories. Because the humans do work in stories. Like, human society runs... On stories but where the stories emerged and the mediums around which the stories emerged part of what people are saying is that they emerged on things that had like a technical merit for them to emerge around and I think that's probably what's going on right like nobody has developed a very popular and socially interesting medium of exchange based on highly perishable goods right like never None of the examples, like what's the worst, like a banana, right? Like there's no society in the world that's like, we're just going to denominate all our transactions and bananas and store it on a banana ledger. And well, no, because eventually the bananas are going to get like smelly. And no one's going to want them around. So I think the technical aspects are what drive adoption. And then technical aspects drive which which things people start to use, and then people wrap social stories around the adoption. And so it does, it's real, this point is correct. But I don't think the story could drive adoption of something that couldn't work technically. Um, 